Today, we're excited to welcome two people who founded their own production company before even finishing college. Michael Perone and Jeffrey Mikowski join us to talk about their award-winning film and what they're cooking up next. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today, we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give Michael and Jeffrey a big welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. This is amazing. Well, you two are business partners in Sonder Productions. And um, you founded your company while you were both in school. What is each of your roles at this company that you run together? Well, I'm more of like a director writer. I'm like creative and he's functional and, and producing. I'm more operations. How did you manage to launch your production company while in school? You were probably pretty busy. Uh, after the creation of our first feature film, um, we realized we needed to become a legitimate business. It also legitimizes you as filmmakers. Um, I mean, everything down for business plans to taxes, and you really need to surround yourself with a really good team, um, and that's what we did. And we also were creating a bunch of original content that we knew that we needed to stay in-house with. Um, we had an amazing crew from SVA that were all looking for work, and we knew that by legitimizing ourselves as a production company, that we would be able to provide these people with work and a means to make some money. And what was that first film? It was called Evil, uh, yeah. E-V-O-L, which is Love Backwards. Um, it's a story about a 17-year-old kid who basically is sent to New York City uh, to seek psychiatric care, and uh, through the process, he learns about the brutalities of life and the realities of love. So it's uh, you know it's a coming of age story, uh, love story, but it you know it's a little more on the R-rated form. <laughs> well, the film won eight awards at ten festivals. Congratulations! Thank you so much. Dude. Seriously, yeah. and this is your first film, by the way. Right. Right. I I don't know that many people come out the gate so hot. So good for you. Um, why? Yeah, you're welcome. Why do you think the film was received so well? Well, I think that, I think everybody kind of wanted to see what like 19, a 19-year-old 19 director could make. And, uh, but I also think that, you know, we were, we we're talking about a topic of love. So love is absolutely universal. And so everybody kind of was receiving it well. We, the story is uh, structured in a, um, in like a soap opera sense, in the sense that we kind of bounce back and forth through a lot of different characters. So there's a character for everybody in the movie. And if you don't relate with the main guy, then you'll relate with somebody else. And how did you come to not only write this script, but fund it and produce it? What was your process? I'll talk, I'll talk about <laughs> writing. I'll let him talk about funding. Um, writing, I actually got the story idea from a, a news article I read about this woman in Colorado who uh, more or less slept with a student and uh, she ended up going to jail. And when she Wait, got, was she a teacher? She was a teacher. Okay. And uh, she essentially uh, went to jail and 10 years later came out of jail and married this student. So it kind of sparked this idea. It's like, can, can love really have societal borders? Well, that, that is a point of view. Yeah. And what about, what about the funding and the production? Is that where you came in? So funding was a lot of groveling to private equity investors um, we pitched them a fantastic idea and you know we are fantastic at what we do and um, just the just the, uh, the award sense um, what we received from the from the feedback is a testament to our uh, professional quality and our abilities and uh, frankly we had a lot of people that believed in us and yeah. it's exactly. it worked out it's great and also SVA helped us out a lot and, and I think that that's something to say about like to young college kids is that you know, everybody uh, tries to make you shoot a short film and there's not really much all that you can do with a short film. So I think that our idea was like, let's make a feature and at least we can sell it. Even if it's not the best thing, it'll, it'll sell. And that's what we did, so, you know. Well, what do you hope that viewers take away from the film when they watch it? You know, that love essentially it can be really hard and challenging and we can get you know, so upset with our partners and at some point, you know, we all go through it and we all pursue it for that, like that one moment where nothing else matters but you and that person. And I think that, uh, you know, it's something, you know, everybody deals with their struggles in their own love relationships. And I think it's important to keep going with the people that you started with that sometimes not. So you have to make that decision and it's, it's, it's tough, you know, um, but yeah, definitely the relatability of just dealing with love. 
And in general, you are a filmmaker with a purpose. You've spoken out against misogyny in the entertainment industry. How does this purpose influence your work as a director and writer? Right, so yeah, we're making our next film. It's called Kurt, uh, K-U-R-T. Uh, um, and, you know, it's all about this uh, fading fashion photographer who's kind of still living in the 90s, treating women and men uh, with such a harsh tone and, and uh, you know, a kind of an all-powerful dictatorship sense, sensibility. And, you know, it's something that as, as young filmmakers, we, we don't want to pr produce that anymore. We don't want the entertainment industry to be known for that. We would like to actually come in and change things and give everybody respect. And uh, yeah, I just think that we love our mothers so much, you know, <laughs> so at some point we had to make this film for women in this world. And, you know, coming from uh, the voice of two, you know, a 26 year old male and 29 year old male, I think that what we're really trying to say is it's not all men are bad out there. There definitely are some good guys, but we need to talk about this because if fathers continue to create, have sons, and the, the chain reaction will continue. And we, if you have a, a bad father, they will create a bad son. So our, our hope is to kind of start hitting the young, uh, the, the young world and telling them that like, hey, that's, it's not okay to talk to somebody like that. Um, what other ways do you use your work to send a real message and make impact on our society? Well, uh, we're shooting a documentary in Venezuela uh, about oh. what's going on down there. Um, and, you know, I mean, people are out there with money, but still no access to food. And it seems just kind of ridic ridiculous how the world doesn't really want to help out. So definitely with film as a tool, uh, you can really make an impact on the people that don't even know what's going on. You can educate. and. For us, we're doing the same. Every time we step into a film, uh, we, we try to do as much research. Like for this fashion film, I actually ended up taking a job for nine months at a studio just to kind of gain really? research. Yeah, I just put myself in there. I wanted to like know what it really was like. So- It's very undercover boss of you. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's method, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we, you know, we, we connected ourselves with a Venezuelan cinematographer, Rafael, and, and he kind of, you know, he's still got family down there and it's hard to see that heartbreak in his, in his eyes. Uh, so we put some money into this and now we're gonna go shoot that in February next year. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Cool. Now this next question is for each of you. It's a very important question. What is your favorite movie and why? Go for it. I'd say uh, right now it'd have to be Whiplash, simply because of the way that they created the movie, how they shot it as a short and then they funded it um, through the spec short. And that's what, how we've been handling our careers, um, is shooting a lot of shorts and then getting the funding, proof of concept, and then to go on, on and win an Oscar. And frankly, I haven't had a movie that's made me have incited such, something inside of me to want to see the protagonist win um, it's, as that movie. So I'd say, yeah, that's, that's mine. Uh, I think it's American Beauty. You know, yeah. American Beauty is like just everything to me, from Newman's score to, um, the ensemble cast and the writing as well by Alan Ball. So yeah, the film really does it for me. I also just want to say that I think Finding Nemo is the greatest screenplay ever yeah. written. So if you haven't seen that, you should check that out. It's a, it's a feel good. <laughs> yeah, I Absolutely. mean, it's just so structured. Yeah. Like the idea is a lot of writers are out there and they don't, they don't really care about their third act, but we were taught in school to have a rising action in your third act and yeah. they have the best rising action, so. yeah. Is there any particular actor or actress who has had influence on you in your career? Matthew Lawrence. Okay. Uh, Matthew Lawrence is from Boy Meets World, Mrs. Doubtfire, and you know, on our first film, we just kind of took a chance on him, and we, we, or he took a chance on us, but we took a chance in sending him an offer, and he responded so warmly, and it was just like, I was a 19-year-old kid, and this guy who has such a career, and everybody knows him, and is gonna give me an opportunity, so. Yeah, we're working with him on the next one, and we're excited for that. I'd have to agree with that, Matthew Lawrence, considering he was the first actor that I was able to work with, yeah. Well, how can we watch all of your work? And I am telling you, I am pledging that by the end of the weekend, I'm watching everything that okay, you've done. Great. Okay, all of it. I, I love your story. How can everybody watching look at your work today? You can go on Amazon. Okay. Um, you can type in evil, that you'll find, or that I'll find it up there. E-V-O-L. Yes. yes, here, I got it right there. Oh, that's, that's commitment. Yes, exactly, I got Kurt over there. Good. Too. So, um, you can go on Amazon, you can go on iTunes. Uh, conveniently enough, we're at Walmart, if you still watch DVDs. Uh, Best Buy as well. Um, 
that's about it. Our, our other stuff, our new stuff will go out to Netflix. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Well, I enjoyed learning about yeah, your, your you past so projects, future projects. That was fun. Yeah, we're here. Now it's time to play our favorite game called Hustle Time. We're going to set a clock for 60 seconds and see how many cards you can get through. Okay. Who wants to start? Jeff. Okay. okay. So I just need 60 seconds on the clock. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Best part of your workout? I don't work out. Personal trainers, effective or too much cash? <laughs> too much cash. Grape flavor, yay or nay? No. New York or London? New York. An ideal fake sick day? Uh, play video games. Would you rather visit Licorice Castle or Peppermint Forest? Peppermint Forest. Well, we gotta take turns. We're volleying. No, it's okay. Let him go. I mean, I'm just Skittles. <laughs> Skittles. Skittles. <laughs> okay. I did. Arms, legs, or abs? Uh, all of it. Favorite pastime, music or movies? Movies. First place you visit when you retire? Bora Bora. Number one guilty pleasure? Uh, Jewel. One word you wish you could take away from the English language? Ooh, flabbergasted. Boozy Kitchy. brunch or morning workout? Boozy brunch. Boozy brunch. <laughs> Football, NFL or soccer? Soccer. soccer. Aliens, fact or fiction? Fact. fact. Beer or wine? Beer. Beer. Favorite part of a s'more? The s'more. All of it, yeah. A top quality you look for in an employee? Uh, dedication. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Favorite holiday? Uh, Christmas. Christmas. Which would you rather add to your life, time or value? Time or value? Value. Time, value. <laughs> okay, that that was that was fantastic. I didn't know what was going on, but I think I think the the perception is you were gonna do all of it, and then we're gonna. Play That's what again. I thought. And I was gonna <laughs> take one, take one, take one. Take I just one. shut them out. I shut them. But I but like like this is a lot. <laughs> This is a lot. Right, let's, cool. see, let's see how we did. And I think we found a rhythm. Switch off. That's like an organic sort of uh, effort right there. Yeah. I mean, we've been with each other for so long, we're kind of becoming the same person. We kind of are. <laughs> a lot of the answers are exactly the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Ooh, blackjack. Wow. Blackjack. That's lucky. Wow, guys. Is nice that good? job. That's really good. <laughs> Favorite part of your day? Uh, my favorite's the morning. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Uh, tough people, uh, tough times don't last, tough people do. Don't sweat the small stuff. Worst piece of advice? Stop. Yeah, Quit. maybe you should consider something else. Yeah. How do you use your career to inspire others? Uh, you know, just doing, uh, I think, just kind of doing stuff like this and, and, and promoting young students to do the same thing that we did when we were in college. By being happy. Ever felt like walking away? Yes. No. One thing you still need to learn? Everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. We're not really there yet. <laughs> what do you want people to learn from you? Uh, to stick together with your best friend and have loyalty, undying loyalty. That, as cliche as it sounds, hard work and dedication pay off. What's next for you? Uh, take over the world and make some movies in the meantime. <laughs> what an Oscar. Yeah. Who inspires you? Michael. Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> Who challenges you? Michael. <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> this next question is actually from our favorite pug, Noodle. Oh, yes. oh. Here he comes. Noodle! Oh, noodle! <laughs> Okay. Who wants them? Jeff, on, Jeff. Oh, good. You're wearing black. That's yeah, perfect. That's perfect. Is, that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> this is okay. Noodle. Uh. <laughs> Noodle is working on a new video series here at GoDaddy called Tools of the Trade. A series where our School of Hustle guests can create this entrepreneurial box for Noodle to unbox with Jonathan, the fantastic Jonathan. So while Noodle is very excited about this, he's very nervous. What advice do you have for Noodle as he sets out to gain engagement in a very crowded, demanding space? Well, Noodle, uh, you definitely need to stay true to yourself, uh, most importantly. Uh, Jeff, do you have any advice for Noodle? Avoid people wearing black. <laughs> definitely. Um, dedication. And just be kind to people. Yeah. Kindness, you will attract more flies with honey. Yeah. I love to leave everybody with a final thought as we finish up. And, I'm gonna read three quotes and ask you to listen to the three quotes and tell me which quote resonates the most with you and why, okay? okay? Number one, a champion is defined not by their wins, but how they can recover when they fall. 
Number two, if you look at what you have in life, you'll always have more. Number three, we must be willing to let go of the life we planned in order to have the life that is waiting for us. Wow, that's tough. The first one yeah. resonated with me the most. As, as okay. well, yeah. The, the champion is defined not by their wins, but how they can recover when they fall. Yeah, yeah. that's most as filmmakers, applicable to us as filmmakers. Yeah. Yeah. As filmmakers, you have to be steal yourself for failure in every aspect. Yeah. And um, it comes down to how you pick yourself up and yeah. doing it with grace. And you know you're only as good as your greatest victory, so. And, and all your films are widely and publicly reviewed even, right? right. I mean, you, you're opening yourself up to all kinds yeah. of different criticisms, positive and negative. Yeah, you carry it with you everywhere you go. Of course. It just becomes a part of you. And so you just, you ignore those negative reviews and keep going. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, I enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for having us. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my pleasure, very happy my to pleasure. pleasure and, to meet you and tell everyone one more time how to watch your work. Amazon, iTunes, and if you go to Walmart, we sell DVDs there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and if you loved this conversation, which I'm sure everybody did, follow GoDaddy across social because we are bringing more inspiration from fabulous entrepreneurs every week. So until next time, bye.